uh, you, you have a proposal or, or a plan that you hope is going to uh, help end the idea that companies are going to want to leave New York, but I want to understand what it means. Okay, Andrew, thanks so much. First of all, let's uh, say to Goldman Sachs, please don't leave us. We're in an, a desperate time in New York right now. We need you. You're important to us. We want you to stay. But we understand there are things that make New York unattractive. And one of the biggest things that's happened recently was the 2017 tax cut that put a cap on the SALT deduction. And what I'm doing is I've been proposing legislation. I passed it through the House with a Democratic majority and some Republican votes uh, to repeal the SALT cap, to put the SALT deduction back. I'm going to do it again in January, but this time, let's keep track of the people that are not supporting the reinstatement of the SALT deduction. And New Yorkers, I'm pleading with you, all New Yorkers, don't give financial support, don't give contributions to those politicians that are killing us. They are working against us. They are, they are undermining us. Don't donate to our, uh, to our, our demise. Tom, can, can I just broaden this conversation out, though, because the SALT deduction is a big issue, but there are municipalities, cities across the country uh, that, have, uh, that have typically been higher tax cities or higher tax states than others. And you're seeing, you're, you're seeing a demonstrable move where people are going to Florida, they're going to Texas. Uh, we can ask, you know, as a New Yorker, I can ask the Goldman Sachs of the world to stay in New York. I could try to make a moral argument to stay in New York. I could, I could even go farther than that, which is to say that Goldman Sachs got a $115 million tax break to build their headquarters in New York City back in 2000, uh, in, in the late 2000s when they built that, uh, uh, built that headquarters. But the real question is, beyond SALT, which, which may, may be able to be repealed, though I don't think there's a big appetite to do that, what you think states and cities uh, that are in these positions should be doing? Well, I just want to just stick with SALT for one second, then I'll, I'll answer your question. We have to focus on repealing the SALT deduction. It's, a, it's, it's exacerbating the problem we faced before coronavirus, but exacerbated by coronavirus. And the SALT deduction makes it that much worse, the cap on the SALT deduction. And anybody who contributes money to politicians that don't support the reinstatement of the SALT cap, we're going to start publishing their names starting in April. As far as other things cities have to do, uh, municipalities have to do, states have to do, politicians have to do, in New York, we need to recognize how important the financial sector is to our economy. We understand, you know, the, the historic issues with Wall Street and the problems that exist and abuses and need for reform. OK, there are some issues that need to be addressed. There's no question about that. But the financial sector, the real estate sector, the insurance sector in New York are central to our economy. And we need to start treating them like that. In Detroit, they don't pick on the car companies. In Houston, they don't pick on the oil companies. In Iowa, they don't pick on the agriculture businesses. We need to build a relationship so we can work together, have understandings with each other, and trust mm -hmm. with each other that we can make it more attractive for them to live here. Tom, but part of the conundrum, I think, is it's not just about how the cities are treating the companies themselves. It's actually the tax rate for individuals. So one of the things that I understand from my reporting on Goldman Sachs is that there's a group of employees who effectively think that they would like to work in Florida because their personal income taxes would be a lot lower. It becomes a more attractive place for them to be. Therefore, the employer says, if I want the talent and I want to keep everybody happy and all of that, I'm going to go to these other places. Then the question, by the way, meantime, you know, on a, from a corporate perspective, New York, even though they have very high tax rates, typically there's tax breaks left and right that have been given out to keep corporations in New York, which are not preventing them from leaving. And so the question is, do you lower the tax rates here in New York, which might seem like the thing to do, but then you have an even bigger revenue problem? Yeah, well, there's a, this is a major challenge. The places that have the higher taxes in America are the older places, the older industrial places, quite frankly, originally, that have older infrastructure. You know, right now, New York subsidizes the rest of the country. We are the biggest net donor state in the United States of America. And who do we subsidize? Well, the taker states are states like South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, Arizona. When people say they want to move out of New York, where are they going? South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, Arizona. When the progressive tax code was first set up, when we said, oh, we have to help our, our, our lower income brothers and sisters throughout the rest of the country, we set up this system under the New Deal and the Great Society to subsidize these other states, to help them to catch up with us. Now we're subsidizing them to kick our ass. They're, they're the ones that are booming. When they get the money, they're building new roads and new sewers and new hospitals and new schools, and they're expanding, and their tax bases are expanding. 
when we get the same money and we get less, we're fixing old roads and old sewers and old schools and old hospitals, and we're just hanging on for dear life. So there needs to be a relook at the entire way that the federal government hands out our money because we're the biggest net donor in America. One of the things that really gets me is when Mitch McConnell says, I don't want to do a blue state bailout. Well, in the past five years, New York State has sent $120 billion more in income taxes to the federal government than we've gotten back, while te- uh, Kentucky, where Mitch McConnell is from, has received $150 billion more than they've put in. We've been bailing them out, so to speak, for years, for decades. So we'll do that. We understand that. We're good Americans. We're going to s- support other people in our country. But let's not hurt us in our time of need. This has happened to us during 9-11 during Sandy, now during the COVID crisis where they don't want to give us money for the uh, state and local aid. And it happened worst of all with the capping of the SALT deduction. You talk about those employees that are telling their bosses, hey, I want to move to a place where it's cheaper. The SALT deduction was a punch in the gut. It was one of the most dramatic things that have encouraged people to move out. Listen, New York will always be New York. We've got Lincoln Center. We've got Broadway. We've got these great restaurants. We have Central Park. We have all these wonderful places on the Long Island Sound, upstate New York, the Adirondacks. We have these great things. It's more expensive to live here, but it's managed to work for many, many years. But now we're in a crisis stage because of coronavirus and because of the salt deduction. And we need to start holding those politicians accountable. And New Yorkers need to stop giving them money until they wake up to the reality that they are hurting our state, they're hurting our city, they're hurting our towns and villages. So uh, I'm going to start organizing more to hold these politicians accountable and ask New Yorkers not to contribute to them. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.